Every day, we're here for you. We get things off the ground, keeping you connected. We're here keeping you safe and secure. We keep things running smoothly and know the importance of giving back. Every day, we're here. ARA, here for you, here for good. Welcome to Everyday Greatness, and thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Barnaby Howarth. We're coming to you from Sydney Swans HQ in Moore Park. And today, I'll be talking to two incredible human beings. Sean Christie David is this, the founder and CEO of Plate It Forward, a social enterprise venture that delivers food to vulnerable people in Sydney. And the head of Swans HQ, Liz Pontica. We'll be chatting about how... We'll be chatting about how groups like the Sydney Swans and Plated Forward help Australian communities share the same meal. Before I start, though, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we meet, the Gadigal and Bidjigal people. I'd like to extend my re respect to Elders past, present and emerging. One of, the bit, one of the proudest things I can say about myself is that I am Australian. So I give this acknowledgement from the heart. And I want to thank our Indigenous brothers and sisters for sharing their land with us. If you've ever been to an all-you-can-eat restaurant, eaten on a, on a cruise ship in the food court, or had breakfast at a hotel buffet anywhere in Australia or anywhere in the world, you've probably shaken your head and thought, what a waste of food, but done nothing else about it. Our guest today, though, Sean Christie David, has done plenty about it. Sean started a social food enterprise that brings Australian communities together through sharing meals. From the outside, Plate It Forward sounds like a really ambitious project, but Sean's personal story makes it all make sense. Sean's parents came to Australia from Sri Lanka in the 1980s. And after finishing high school, Sean got a job in the corporate world and became kind of a big deal in the money-making corporate, corporate game, working across various jobs in Australia and the United Kingdom. But the lessons Sean and his brothers learned at their family kitchen table from his parents weren't about how to become ruthless, win-at-all-costs money-makers, they're about matters of the heart and using your skills to make the world a better place. So in 2019, Sean opened Colombo Social, a modern Sri Lankan restaurant that actively recruits asylum seekers and he provides training and mental health support for workers in need. In 2020, during the COVID lockdowns, more people were in need than ever before. So Sean started Plate It Forward, that social enterprise that brought a sense of comfort and purpose when people were otherwise in Struggle City. Sean's parents once said that it doesn't matter if you're the king or queen of England or a person that just walked in off the street, everybody gets treated the same. With such a strong drive to make the community a better place, it's no surprise that the cafe at Sydney Swans HQ is staffed by Plate It Forward. So to chat about how food can be used to make a more inclusive society, it's a privilege to welcome to Everyday Greatness, Sean Christie David and Liz Pontica. Thank you, Sean and Liz, for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So let's start with you, Sean, and how Plate It Forward started. Did you have a fully blown existential crisis when you're in the, in the money-making world and want to give back to society? Uh, kind of. Uh, it had always been there. I, I think when I was growing up, we grew up very lucky with, I suppose, food, comfort, health, and, and in particular growing up in Australia and Sydney, uh, the greatest country that we could ever ever kind of live in. And But my parents had left Sri Lanka um, and only much later on in life, when I was about 20, I would have been 28, um, working at a very nice bank, um, having a very good life that I went over to Sri Lanka and saw what could have been. It was that kind of sliding doors moment about this is this is where life would have been if you weren't born 
in Australia. Um, and that made me, I suppose, a bit overwhelmed, a bit, a bit, a bit, bit kind of shocked. But then what do you do with that? And how do you create opportunities for people that didn't get that, that didn't win the birth lottery that I won? So that's kind of how we, how we developed the, the, the movement that is now. Um, but that took years of, of soul searching, digging deep and trying to figure out how do you create that. Movement is probably a very good word to describe how it all rolls. So tell us a bit about each one of your social enterprise ventures. Let's start with Colombo Social. <coughs> what can people expect if they make a booking there? So Colombo is, I don't know how to describe it without saying the word fusion, but it's that kind of, it's my, it's my journey, but not only my journey, but, but people that have been born in this country that parents have been been kind of from, from overseas. And we decided to do a menu that was kind of, modern Sri Lankan. So taking influences of Australia. Um, so it's got, you know, soft shell crab, roti tacos. So taking that, taking that whole taco, I'll, I'll explain it through, I'll explain it through one dish because it's, it's the easiest way to describe it. So I was born here um, and Sri Lanka and what's the sim similarities, fresh seafood, fresh fruit and vegetable, but then like modern Australian dying, which is tacos. Um, so we took that tortilla that you're taking in the taco, put a roti instead. So the roti bread symbolic like the way that we ate bread um, and then coated it in Sri Lankan spices and then brought Australian Sri Lankan influences. And the whole style of the menu is that it's heavy hip hop, it's cool cocktails, it's a nice fit out, it's, it's a fun place to be. But then you go to the second part and you go to the second stage of your dining experience. So after you had your starters and your, your entrees, you go into the mains and that's my mum's authentic homestyle food that she's just she's given us her recipes she's given us everything and we've created that kind of cross culture of first generation migrant authentic true um and then and then funky kind of venue as well so that's that's colombo a second venue was kabul um and that's really fun afghan women um who are, a lot of them are over the age of 55 their very first job ever um and some some uh, younger ladies now who they're mentoring and training up to be, become like the, the next ambassadors and leaders of that venue. And that's really cool. Afghan food, um, grab and go style. And then we've got Kiev, which is our Ukrainian again, influenced heavily by generational mums and, and grandmas, and then taking a funky twist on it with cool kind of ceviches and, and other dishes that we've, we've been able to, to pull out and make, make modern as well. Sounds tremendous. Making me hungry. Yeah. And I've got to ask this question on behalf of a lot of, Australians who can't <clears throat> cope with a lot of spice. How spicy are your meals at Colombo Social? <laughs> <laughs> there's rice. There's rice if you don't like spice. I think that, I think that's, that's the only thing that you can eat. Uh, no, nah, there, there, there's 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 various styles. So we've, we've ranked our curries from bloody hot all the way through down to mild as well. <laughs> bloody hot. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a good official, <laughs> official description. So let me ask you about your jump from the corporate world as a, you described yourself as living a pretty good life when you were in, the, in that world, how big was the risk as you saw it in taking on a food, on a social enterprise venture? My mum still asks me when I'm going to get a job. She's like, when are you get a proper job? I'm like, oh, far out. Um, but uh, I think the, the, the payoff, and financially it's a stupid decision. I, I admit that and, and I know that full well. But where the payoff for me has always been was that internal happiness and knowing that the money that was thrown at me in the corporate world would never satisfy the deep desire to do something for people that that, that really deserved it. And um, I look at I look at things now, um, and I mean it's still risky. You know, hospitality in any sense, and, and we're watching it now. And I was watching an interview with Neil Perry today, and uh, and the, the 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 real impact that things are having on the hospitality sector with the cost of living crisis, and and, and not, not not many people going into restaurants. It will always be there. It's a risky business. Um, uh, return on investment, if you want to call it that, has always been the social side. How many people are we employing? What are their outcomes? What are we doing for the wider community? And how does the work that we do create better long-term um, outcomes for everybody that's involved in our, in our movement? So that's how we look at it. So do we, do we I don't know. Do we think about everything? Yes, we think about the business side as a business side. However, we still think of that social side. And I think we're a generational movement designed to have role models in our organisation to create better pathways for their children, their families and everybody coming up behind them. So that's what we're looking at. That's very cool <coughs> to hear. 
Now, Liz, let me ask you a couple of questions mm. about the Sydney Swans tying in with Plated Forward. Why did the Swans find it appealing to join with Plated Forward to staff your cafe here at Sydney Swans HQ? Yeah, well, I think um, like a lot of companies, we went out looking, we went out to tender and we put two social enterprises up against big corporates. We wanted a new um, caterer for our new home when we moved in in 2022 and it was really important to us to make sure that, first of all, the food was there and could meet the nutritional needs of athletes, but also that it did feel like home. We have a lot of people that spend a lot of time here and it needs to not feel like a corporate lunch every day. It needs to feel like home cooking with good flavours and authentic recipes, which Plate It Forward certainly delivered. Um, and we, you know, we tasted up against multiple um, organisations and Plate It Forward was the clear winner in that front. But it's been so much more than that since we started and having the social enterprise in the building has brought so much more to us than just food at lunchtime every day. So it's a really broad brief. We eat pretty much six days a week at the moment, but we also do corporate catering to raise money for the club. We have match days experiences. We've done exclusive boardroom dinners. It's it's a pretty broad brief. Uh, so there's actually not many people that could actually deliver that. And the team at Plate It Forward have really stepped up to the plate there and have really become part of the Swans family here. And I think it's important. There's a couple of other areas in the building that we support social enterprises. And I think, you know, everyone has a little bit of money to spend in their budget. How much further can you make that go? And that's certainly something that's important to me and, and the team. Sounds like a perfect match. So, Sean, <laughs> you talked about return on investment for Plated Forward. How does being aligned to the Sydney Swans help you get returns on your investment? <clears throat> that's a great question. I, I just walked into the kitchen today um, and there's two people seeking asylum that have never worked in restaurants before. <laughs> um, and one has been in that kitchen for, I'd say, four weeks, five weeks, um, a newly arrived Ukrainian, uh, you know, and we, we had him in the restaurants and, and he struggled with the English barrier. He struggled to, to, to communicate with customers. And, and I could see him getting really frustrated because he, he knew what to do, but he just couldn't, couldn't say it. And when I walked in today um, and he's, he's, he's in the kitchen here and under the guidance of, of our head chef and some of the other team, but also having interaction with, with other people outside in a much more relaxed environment than a restaurant, um, a lot more, uh, a lot different type of service, just a lot more friendly service than you would in, when you're going out there. And he's just shining. You know, mm. he's happy. He's, he's said a full sentence to me, which after like six months of knowing was the first time he had a full sentence back. Um, and that level of growth, you can't get that. You know, you can't. There's no price on that to see someone happy after knowing what he's been through, knowing what he went um, to get here. Um, and the challenges that he's faced from 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 day one in this in this country, but also the the last few months in in Ukraine, um, and they're smiling, they're happy, mm. they they feel part of it, they feel connected to to people, um, and he gets to see people watching the food that he was created. Yeah, that, that, that's cool. It's, it's it's unreal. So yes, there's there's that huge um, level of appreciation that comes from the team um, and our team, and I think that that kind of it's, it's our secret ingredient in all our, you know, all our places is that is that real pride that people have in their job because it means so much more to them than just turning up to a nine to five. We've been so fortunate to see some of the staff that started at the back in the kitchen <laughs> slowly just with a different hello every day, make their way to the front and mm. feeling more confident to say hi on the way in every day yeah. and feel part of it and now popping up to the match and getting really behind the team. Yeah. I don't think uh, we have an Iranian staff member in the team and I don't think she would have ever thought to follow football or the <laughs> AFL, but she's now uh, right into it, watching yeah. away games <laughs> and giving us updates on how the players are performing. So exactly it's right. a yeah. huge shift and yeah. it's a joy for us to watch. Um, not knowing everyone's story in detail, which isn't necessary, but yep. seeing that shift is so cool. Yeah, That is very cool to hear. We, we live in a world where <laughs> return on investment or ROI is very <laughs> sterile, very black and white. Yeah. If I'm going to put this amount of effort in, I need this amount of money in return. But just happiness and inclusivity mm. is really nice to hear. Absolutely. So, Liz, Sydney Swans HQ was designed to try and foster a more inclusive environment. Mm. How has Played It Forward staffing your cafe helped with that? Well, it's the hub, isn't it? Like it literally and figuratively, it's the heart of the club is our club dining room. And the guys that designed the club, which I can't say well, I was part of, really focused on being able to have everyone together for lunch. So that we've just walked in from lunch now and we've got men's players, women's players, coaches, staff. We've got some of our tenants up there all having lunch together, sharing different stories, having a chat over a meal. And that's it's just critical to the culture and it's critical to make sure that 
everyone's looked after and and everyone's having a great day. So the Plate It Forward staff work so hard to deliver us with our shifting schedules and our different needs of everyone that needs to eat here. And it's they've just become part of the family. So we're so fortunate. Very cool. Now, Sean, your parents taught you a lot about how to behave as a human being. What are the lessons they taught you that you've taken into your restaurants and your social food enterprises? It, it's it's exactly what Liz just spoke about. It's that way that you sit down and t- engage people over the dining table. So my mum had three sons and, 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 and my dad as well. And so that'll be four different times that people will come in for meals. Four different <laughs> shit. Sorry. Um, and they would, my mum would always sit with us and have a chat about how was your day? You know, she'd sit down um, and never stand. She'd, she'd, she'd be there. If it's a cup of tea, if it's a biscuit, if it's, if it's a full meal or, or a little snack. Um, and we got told, well, you, you don't eat alone. You don't eat alone. It's very, it's very uncommon for us to eat alone. Um, and when someone is at your dining table, you engage with them. So our restaurants all the way through from, you know, casual fine dining through to grab and go restaurants um, and the work that we do here at, at HQ it's always about that interactivity with people and going to a woman, just 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 checking in on them. Hey, how are you? Um, how is the food? Do you know? I say this about to, to every restaurant. I'm like, picture your mum, for example, who again our staff are from from war zones and, and areas that they, they don't see their family a lot. I'm like, picture your mum comes here after two three years. You know, some of them have been fifteen years away from their families, and and they come to your restaurant to see you at work. What would you do? You'd clean your bathroom. You'd, you'd make sure the whole place is tidy. You'd make sure that when they're eating, that you're going up to them and just having that conversation all the time. I'm like, do that with every guest. Um, and that style of service is very relaxed. It's, it's not it's not your standard hatched restaurant style of thing, but it's it's warm, it's personable, and it's it's what we use food for, which is a way to connect and, and, and really check in on people. Couldn't agree more. That was a perfect answer. I think it's so important as well that everyone eats the same meal here mm. and it's the same cooking that the team does in other locations and sure there's some volume differences depending on what <laughs> program you're on but it's, you know, the CEO right through to the players, right through to the staff, everyone yeah. is eating the same meal and it's so important I think, such a leveller. Very it, true. It's really fascinating because John is one of the one of the senior chefs here um, and we've had food reviewers, we've had celebrities come into the restaurants and, and I remember the first time that we had a VIP table like a VIP table was like it doesn't matter it does not matter every table is a VIP table everybody gets the same meal I don't I don't I don't change what I'm doing because of that table and that was like that was one of the very first restaurant mm-hmm. interactions I had and I'm like, oh wow and that shaped us again went back to that core belief of what my mum would always said it doesn't matter who they are you treat them exactly the same way we donate 3,000 meals a week and make sure that the quality of the meals that we donate <laughs> is up to the standard that we would serve here. Otherwise, I don't do it. I'm like, they, just because we're donating, it does not mean that we drop our standards. It does not mean we treat people any differently. So we've, we've got we've got that as an ethos that runs throughout the whole organisation. It's a bloody good ethos. Mm. So let me tell you, let me ask you a bit more about your parents. How lucky do you feel your parents fled a civil war in Sri Lanka mm. and came to Australia? How lucky do you feel that a bloke whose parents moved from Sri Lanka to escape a civil war can start this hugely successful food enterprise and give back to the world and give back to vulnerable communities and help bring communities together? Um, I feel humbled, but I think at the end of the day, what I see my responsibility as and what, what, what I see myself as is an ambassador for the people that are, or are there. That depth of talent, that depth of um, compassion, that depth of intelligence is, is, is I'm just one of millions of people that are often underestimated. I'm one of millions of people that didn't get that, that well, I got that chance, but there's so many people that are from Sri Lanka, Yemen, um, Palestine, where, wherever you want to, wherever you want to be, um, who aren't getting those opportunities. And I think the role that I've always had is I get to walk into rooms such as the, the room with, you know, the, the, the leaders of the Sydney Swans or CEOs of big organizations or whatever it is. I, I, I walk in there, and I represent those people and say, what we're doing is we're not giving these people a chance. So if they are underestimated or they underrepresented, let's give them the representation. Because if I could do this, imagine what people are a lot more smarter than I am who don't have those opportunities. If we give them that, what's the world going to be? And the world's going to be a lot better for a place. Very true. Very true. So what's next for Plated Forward? You guys are huge and you're 
doing massive things and giving back to the world in so many different ways. What's next for you guys? Are you going to do Aladala Social? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. It's the very next one. Um, I think so. That, so we're about to hit 500,000 meals that we've donated in Sydney um, and then we'll hit about 600-something thousand over, uh, across the globe. So I think, we'll, I think we'll take a bit of time to celebrate that 500,000. <laughs> I, I think we've never celebrated a milestone. Um, working on a First Nations venue um, with some incredible Indigenous business partners there. So it would be a very community-led promotion of uh, native ingredients that haven't been used in, in, in Australian modern cooking um, while going back to uh, what we do, which is the employment of people. So we're looking at um, about eight young Indigenous women to be employed through that restaurant as well. Um, and then I don't know. And then hopefully um, hopefully the movement can continue and just get bigger. Sounds like it is. So let me pull you up on that stat you just gave, 500,000 meals you've donated. Is that We've donated five. Oh man, I always get. Oh, someone's gonna, someone's gonna fact check me one day and oh, say, no, yeah, I'm, yeah, just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, no, no, I'm not no, 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 it's about five, no, it's about 570,000 meals, I think, around the world. So there's been about 470,000 meals in Sydney that we've donated. Um, and then we've donated meals in Sri Lanka, uh, through the Foundation of Goodness, which is like Murali and, and Chang Warns charity they set up. There's been meals in Afghanistan. Um, oh, yeah, about 50, 60,000 there. Meals now in Ukraine to an orphanage in Ukraine um, for young fellas as well. Um, and then, yeah, Mexico we did a bit. So I'll get the numbers, but I think we're, we're, we're coming up to the 500,000 meals in, in Sydney. I know that for, for, for certain. So, yeah, we've been going for four years. It, it, it pumps out, pumps out food. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a bit bigger than <laughs> bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I wasn't questioning the number. No, I just think it's I got amazing. It. I've got it. I've so, got to do this because I, I one day I swear I'm going to hit like something. I'm like, you also said that. at the start you don't cut back on quality for every meal. Yeah. So these me- five hundred thousand meals mm. are going out to vulnerable people. Who exactly are you giving meals to? Yeah. So we we've, we've worked with. Some great organisations, so the Department of Communities and Justice that run the the, the towers out in Redfern. Every week we're there, same time, same place. We run, we actually run like a really nice. And the, the Swans, that's how mm. we first actually started to engage with the city Swans when they came out there and just delivered meals and just hung out with the people in Redfern. I think that was our very first interaction. That, that that's how real it is. So we've got that um, people recovering from addiction. We've got refugees and asylum seekers. We've got people living with disability that we we, we donate meals to. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of young families. So, like a lot of lots of young Indigenous families. We 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 look at organisations that sometimes don't get funding or often get overlooked because they're not big. So we look at we we really focus on grassroots small organisations doing incredible work because they've got a very nice relationship with the people that need it through trust and long long term kind of uh, family kind of connections or whatever. So we 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 donate food to them every week so that they can take it home or share it together over a meal. That's incredible. Mm. Now, Liz, I've got to ask you, you are the head of Swans HQ and Plated Forward are employed to give the food at Swans HQ, so that would mean that you are Sean's boss. <laughs> how, <laughs> I pity the fool that thinks they're Sean's boss. Uh, how, how does it feel to <laughs> – do you ever get daunted by having such a high-profile employee <laughs> that's just been on Australian Story a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Well, he's definitely not our employee, but <laughs> – We've brought him in as one of our own and he has some rogue but great ideas, so we've appreciated all of that. But I think seriously we're just so happy to um, be able to have the team here and also contribute to their future greatness as well and support them and provide that uh, regular revenue to be able to let them go out and do all the great in the world that we would love to do. Well, it's an incredible story. You guys talked about being humbled by things you have seen. I'm humbled by having you guys in on Everyday Greatness today, so thank you, Sean. Thank you, Liz, for joining us. No worries. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, And thanks to the Swans for supporting us. It's created um, a huge internal uh, joy for us um, and everyone that comes in here who gets trained up, loves it, they, they, they stay with, with so much pride, but also the work that we've been able to do in the community, that, mm. the ripple effects that happen from this place to go out there to people that we would never know, um, even I don't know them, um, who enjoy the, 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 the fruits of the labour and the Swans have been so generous and and kind in everything they've done. So thank you, uh, and thanks for having us, Matthew. No problem. Thank you for coming on. Thank you all for joining us. 
And thank you to the Sydney Swans for great hosting us so graciously at Swans HQ. I also want to thank the ARA Group for being our major sponsor for the seventh year in a row. I'd like to thank Look Studio Australia for your technical expertise, FASA Digital for your digital marketing services, and thank you all for joining us. I hope you can join us next week on Everyday Greatness, where I'll be speaking to Diane Williams Harrapin, OAM, the daughter of Kenny and Yvonne Williams. We'll sit down with Anita Murphy, the manager of custom operations at the Sydney Swans, who also happens to be a good mate of the Williams family, about how good things happen to good people. We hope you can join us for that one. But if you'd like to find out more about this show, go to the Everyday Greatness page at www.barnabyhoworth.com.au or find us on social media, on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube or Instagram. Or you can also find us on Swans TV. Thank you again for joining us today.